worse. Hundreds of thousands have been killed, wounded, or incarcerated. Millions have been driven from their homes and now live in uh, refugee camps outside the country. I'm afraid the people who live in the country will ultimately decide its destiny, not us. So I think prolonging our stay in that country is ultimately counterproductive. And I would go one step further and acknowledge what General McCaffrey said. I don't think we can afford to stay much longer. We've spent a trillion dollars. We're spending now under Petraeus more than twice what we spent under Casey. The, the, the numbers every month have risen in terms of expense. We can't afford it, and there is no support for it. So there, there's going to have to be some decision. Whether or not we can maintain any forces in the country is another issue. I would argue that, that ultimately that won't be possible. There is so much hostility and antipathy towards us with most of the Muslim Arabs that live in that country. It's going to be very hard for us to stay. So you would be surprised to see residual American forces there over the long term, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Ben, I wonder how you respond to that. Um, sir, with all due respect, uh, I'm. I honestly have to say I disagree with you. Um, I, are you saying that all the money we we put in so far is, has been wasted, and that we shouldn't try and help uh, and anyone who's over there, or are you saying that it's pretty much a lost cause? I mean, personally, I think that we should do everything in our power. I will agree that, yeah, you know, there, there are some things that need to be fixed and some better solution needs to be found. But to completely pull out and leave them to their own devices, I think, would be absolute chaos and be even worse than what it is now. Well, that's, uh, that's your opinion, and there are many people that share it. I don't. Uh, I think that if we leave, we are going to see things sort out quicker rather than uh, longer. Uh, much the way things sorted out in Ireland when the British left and in many other places when the French left Algeria and so forth. There will be a short period of time where there's some fighting, but ultimately there will be a new status quo. Uh, the other point is that the notion that we could go into Iraq and within a space of a few years at gunpoint establish an Anglo-Saxon democracy was always a very fundamentally flawed objective. Uh, that's something we should never have undertaken. We had no right to undertake it, and we need to put an end to it. It's had a, a morally corrupting influence, and it has killed, wounded, or incarcerated hundreds of thousands of people that never were our enemies. Retired Colonel Douglas McGregor, as well as with Retired General Barry McCaffrey. Of course, we've been. Thanks very much for the call. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. I would, at the same time, take note of, of Doug McGregor's arguments that in the long run, it's going to be an Iraqi solution it's probably healthy they think we're leaving, which we're going to do largely in the coming uh, couple, three years. Let's go to Roger. Roger's with us from San Francisco. Yes, thank you. You know, I, physically, how long do you feel it will take to remove our tanks, our artillery, our heavy armor? But this, I'd like to emphasize this. This war, from the very beginning, was a trumped-up war. There was no real justification for it. Now, of course we should get out. And what we've lost diplomatically all over the world, I don't know if we can ever recover from it. But I, I appreciate the your guest. I, I've spoken to General McCaffrey before. He's a very fine man. And the colonel seems to be right on target. So I would like to know, if we wanted to pull out today, how long will it take us to get our people out of there and our equipment out of there? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Colonel McGregor, what do you think? Uh, well, again, I think the most important thing is to make the decision to leave. And uh, this is a good time for it, frankly. It's not going to happen this year, but it would be good because of the current conditions that are not perfect. But we have flooded the place with uh, cash, and uh, people are not shooting at us in great numbers. Muqtada al-Sadr is keeping his powder dry for the moment. So I think it's a good time to get out. The bad news is that if you were to ask the Iraqi parliament, what do you want to do, they would vote overwhelmingly to get us out of the country. It is Maliki and his minority supporters that are trying desperately to keep us in the country because they're the ones that stand to profit from it. Uh, so I think we need to keep in mind that, that that parliament, let it vote, it will vote to get us out. There's no question about that. Uh, I think the Arabs are ready for us to leave. Do, do the Arabs want things from us? Absolutely. We're a co-belligerent in the struggle for power. People will exploit us for cash, for influence, for assistance to try and position themselves. But ultimately, they want us out, and, and we just need to make that decision. Once that's made, you can set up a timetable, whatever it is, 18, 24 months, something like that, so that you're not doing this, the kinds of things that were described. You don't have to destroy large quantities of equipment, and you can withdraw with some measure of dignity. Roger, thanks very much for the call. 
Thank you for the opportunity. And let's turn now to uh, Kathleen. Kathleen with us from Athens, Ohio. Yeah, hi. Um, I want to just thank Colonel McGregor and uh, General McCaffrey for bringing up the deaths of the Iraqi people and the millions of Iraqi refugees that I think many Americans don't really want to think about, quite honestly. But I wanted to ask, whatever um, happened to that regional meeting that was recommended by the uh, Baker Hamilton study group, and would that help? Uh, we heard General McCaffrey say uh, the surrounding states uh, uh, need to be, you know, you came in uninvited, don't leave um, uninvited. Would you agree with that, Colonel McGregor? Well, no, not necessarily. I, I think, first of all, uh, there's no point in holding a regional conference until you make the decision to leave. Until you do that, no one's going to pay much attention to any conference that you convene. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think we need to look to the people inside the country for solutions, not outside of the country. Uh, Iran exerts uh, a negative influence in the minds of many, many Arabs, including millions of Shiites. After all, Muqtad al-Sadr is not pro-Iranian, per se. He's an Arab nationalist, which is one of the reasons he wanted these provincial elections, because he would have swept all the provinces full of Shiites, uh, leaving uh, Maliki and his sponsors and Hakim and others tied to Tehran out of a job. So I think... I think we need to be careful about assuming that uh, a regional conference is going to help us until we make the decision to leave. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, Thanks. thank you. And here's an email from Bobby in St. Louis. After spending an enormous amount of money in Iraq, why wouldn't we establish a permanent base there as we have in Germany, Korea, Guantanamo Bay, etc.? Don't we need a permanent base in the Middle East? Why not in Iraq? Uh, Colonel McGregor? Well... We need to keep in mind that we stayed in Germany and Japan at the end of the Second World War, not because we loved Germans and Japanese, but because there were 15 million Soviet troops poised to overrun the rest of Europe if we did not do that. We arrived actually quite late in Germany in the war. The Russians now admit to the loss of 40 million. So had we not gotten there when we did, that little bit of Germany wouldn't have survived at all. We have a similar situation in Japan. Uh, the floodgates opened, Manchuria, Korea were flooded with uh, the Soviets. We simply had no choice. We had to stay. And then we went about assisting the populations that were there, rebuilding uh, their respective countries. But those populations did the rebuilding. We did not. And uh, that's something that's not widely appreciated or understood. And that has to do with culture and a lot of other things. We're not faced with those circumstances in Iraq. They don't exist. Uh, we're not protecting Iraq from imminent invasion by multiple armies. I mean, I hear these things about Islamo-fascist forces. The, this is very misleading stuff. There, there are simply no armies interested in going in. The one army that's capable of doing it is the Turkish army. Their interests are limited to Kurdistan. They're concerned about a Kurdish state that is going to bankroll and support terrorism against them. That's it. General McCaffrey? Uh, I, well, you know, I, I, I think Doug actually makes a very strong argument, and certainly an easier argument to be made than, than that of the uh, current administration. Barry McCaffrey joined us by phone today from Cupertino, California. General McCaffrey, thanks very much for your time. Yes, sir. And Douglas McGregor was with us here in Studio 3A. Colonel McGregor, we thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Thank you. You can find more of NPR's reporting on the war and a chart of military and civilian deaths in Iraq since March 2003 at our website, npr.org talk. And this is Talk of the Nation from NPR News.